Today we're going to take what take uh, information that we already know about calculating the area of a rectangle and we're going to use that to find the area of a triangle and the area of a parallelogram. So let's have a look at the parallelogram first. Well, the first thing that we know is that we know that the area of any rectangle is equal to the length. Sometimes we call the bottom of the rectangle the base, the length times the width. And sometimes we can call the width the height. Okay, And we see the width and the height are the same length, and the length and the base are the same height. Now, one of the properties in a rectangle is that the length and the width are 90 degrees to each other, or the base and the height are 90 degrees to each other. Now, using what we know about calculating the area of a rectangle, we know that area is equal to the length times the width. Likewise, the area, we could also calculate it by saying the area is equal to the base times the perpendicular height, which is the length of the other side. So those two formulas are equivalent in this rectangle, and we substitute in the numbers, and we know that it is 2 times 2, which equals 4 squares in total, or 4 units squared. And 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 units squared. And we can draw even draw the lines if we want. And you can see there are 4 equal size units there. Okay, so let's change this up a little bit. And now let's look at our parallelogram. So a parallelogram has properties that opposite sides are parallel to each other. So in this case, we have this side is parallel to this side, and we also have this side is parallel to the side directly opposite, making it a parallelogram. There are some other properties of parallelograms, but that's the key one for this exercise. Now, using what we know, we would call the bottom of the parallelogram the base. Likewise, we have to figure out what the height is. Well, if we remember our rectangle example, the height was the height was calculated as being perpendicular to the base. So we need to look at the total height from the bottom to the top of the parallelogram the shortest possible way. And the shortest way is a straight line, which is perpendicular. So we can see that perpendicular is 90 degrees to the base. And we call this the height. Now, let's, take, let's just take a minute to try to rearrange our parallelogram. So if we delete all of those, and now let's put on a yellow elastic. If we take this yellow elastic, we can have a look at this triangle here. Now, imagine taking that triangle, and we're going to move that triangle over to this side. And I'm going to move it over in red. So we take that yellow triangle, so the one that was yellow, and we're going to move it over here. So I'm going to make this triangle. If we look at that yellow triangle that's now been moved over, if we were to take the triangle here and move it over to here, the new shape that we're going to have, that is the exact same size as the original shape, is now a rectangle. And we know the area of a rectangle is always equal to the base times the height, and the height has to be perpendicular. So going back and looking at that parallelogram, the original parallelogram we had, which looked like this, that parallelogram, the area of that parallelogram is the base times the height, which is perpendicular. And the height, the base in this case is equal to 2, and the height in this case is equal to 2. So area of the parallelogram is equal to base times height, which equals 2 times 2, which equals 4 
units squared. And we get that by taking one of the pieces of the parallelogram, this piece here, and imagine moving it over so that we create a similar rectangle. Now let's have a look at the triangle. So if we have our if we have a triangle, we put any triangle onto our geoboard. And I'm purposely choosing a triangle that is not a an isosceles triangle or equilateral triangle. Imagine now that we have a large rectangle that goes around this triangle. So here's our large rectangle that completely covers the triangle. Now if we want to figure out the area of the triangle, as we learned in class, we can pretend that we're actually breaking this into two parts. And we can see that the area of this side here in here is half of this rectangle. So if we look at the area in here, it's going to be half of the area of the rectangle, of the rectangle, the larger one. Likewise, the area over here is half of the area of this rectangle. Now, if this is half of this rectangle and this side is half of this rectangle, then the area of the triangle as a whole must be half of the area of the larger rectangle. Now, we know from rectangles that if they're 90 degrees and we have a base and we have a height, the area of the larger rectangle must equal base times height. However, the area of our triangle, so the area of the triangle must be half of the area of the larger rectangle. Or in other words, the area is base times height divided by two. Now the one thing to remember when working with triangles is that height must be perpendicular. So the height is drawn from the top part of the triangle, that vertice, all the way down to the base at 90 degrees. So this becomes the height of the triangle. Some students will make a mistake and sometimes think that this side over here, the longest side is the height. However, that is not the height. It has to be perpendicular because of what we know about rectangles. I hope that's been helpful today. And it helps you a little bit in terms of remembering what we talked about in terms of area of parallelograms and triangles. Thank you very much.